This is the Construction Leading Edge podcast brought to you by ConstructionLeadingEdge.com. My name is Todd DeWalt. I'm the host. I'm the guy behind the scenes, and it's my job to help you grow your leadership skills, grow your construction business, and grow your income. Today, we have an interview with a gentleman who has founded, created, and built a construction business up to over $100 million in revenue. His name is Brian King. He's the founder, owner, and president of A.M. King, which is a firm that provides planning, designing, construction, and facility services of complex facilities in specific markets throughout the U.S. Founded in 2004 under Brian's leadership, A.M. King has achieved and put in place more than a billion dollars in revenue since its inception. They have approximately 60 employees. Annual revenues exceed $100 million. And AM King is a national firm having now performed work in over 22 states while working with some of the largest and most successful companies in business today. Not only are they a significant size contractor, but they're also recognized as one of the best places to work on both a local and state level. So in this interview with Mr. Brian King, here's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn about the mindset issues that successful contractors need to overcome. You'll also learn what Brian means when he says estimating has nothing to do with selling. That's right, estimating has nothing to do with selling. Brian will share some of the critical financial areas that you need to focus on if you own a business. He also will share his advice for you if you are in the process of starting a construction business or thinking of starting a business. He also has some some advice on why you might consider building a subcontracting business if you're thinking about going into business as a general contractor. And Brian will also share what he calls his unsolicited career advice if you are early in your career or you are about to start your career in the construction industry. But before we get into that interview with Brian, I have two things for you if you are a construction business owner. First of all, I have a free video series that I want to get in your hands. It's specifically for construction business owners. They are some hacks and secrets of successful construction business owners. They'll help you improve your cash flow, help you to build your team and delegate better, and ultimately get more done in less time. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you want to improve your cash flow, delegate better, and get more work done in less time, then go get your hands on your copy of that free video series. Go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash owner, O-W-N-E-R, and I'll get that in your hands. The second thing, if you're a construction business owner and you want to increase your revenue 25 to 50%, if you want to eradicate the chaos in your business and turn it into a well-oiled and profitable machine, then listen up. This is for you. I want to invite you to take advantage of a special offer for a free business breakthrough coaching session where we're going to work together to, one, create a crystal clear vision for your ultimate business success and the lifestyle that you'd like for your business to provide for you and your family. Secondly, we'll work together to uncover some of the hidden challenges that may be sabotaging the growth of your business keeping you working too many hours without the results you want and ultimately holding you back. And the third thing is you're going to leave this call renewed, re-energized, ready to get after it, to go turn your business into a highly profitable, revenue-generating, well-oiled machine. So if you want to take advantage of this limited-time, totally free offer for a 30-minute business breakthrough coaching session, all you got to do is go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash call. If all the spots are taken, let me know, and I'll be sure to get your name on the waiting list. But to lock in your spot for that free coaching session, go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash call. So enough of that. Now let's get to that interview with Brian King. Enjoy. Okay, Brian, thanks for being on the podcast. Um, so Brian, tell us a, give us a real quick synopsis of what you do and a little bit about your company. Uh, yeah, thanks, Todd. Uh, obviously, thanks for having me on the podcast. Excited to be here. Uh, a little bit about me. I, uh, I own a company based in Charlotte, North Carolina. The name of the company is called AM King. Uh, we're a, a, 
fairly good sized firm, uh, I guess in terms of construction, not a huge firm. We'll do about $125, $130 million worth of work a year. Uh, We are a design build firm. So what that means is uh, pretty simple that we tell people if we don't design it, we won't build it. And if we don't build it, we won't design it. A few exceptions there, but generally that's the way that that our firm works. Uh, We have an in-house design group of architects and and engineering, so we tend to do a lot of our design in-house. We also will hire some firms, some outside firms, to do some design for some of our our projects. uh, We're a bit of a niche firm. Probably about 80% of our work is in the food industry. So that would encompass any type of food type facility, whether it's a food processing facility, a uh, food distribution facility, uh, food manufacturing, anything to do with food is really our niche market. And because of that, we tend to be a national firm. Uh, Even though we're based in Charlotte, North Carolina, we also have an office in Greenville, South Carolina. We've worked in about uh, 20, 22 states today. So we work all over the country. And if I were to give you our project listing, I would tell you we have projects active today in states such as uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, uh, Virginia, all the way up the uh, East Coast to Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, and out in the Midwest in places such as the Chicago area uh, and some other Midwestern states, and as far west as Colorado. So we work all over the country. Uh, we've got about uh, 65 employees, a variety of folks. And when we do our projects in other parts of the country, we tend to hire local subcontractors and local firms. So we'll send a, a project manager and, and our field staff out there to manage the project, and then we'll use local subcontractors to actually perform most of the work. So that's kind of a quick synopsis of, of AM King and who we are. Uh, I, have, uh, I was the founder of the company. I founded the company in 2004. So this year we'll celebrate 14 years of business. Uh, I actually uh, have been in the construction industry my entire career. I graduated from the University of Florida in 1986 with a degree in construction and uh, worked in the industry for primarily one very large firm for the majority of my career until I started uh, A.M. King in in 2004. So that's a quick synopsis of me and and my company and, and sort of what we do. Great. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you um, being on the podcast. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to have somebody who has achieved what you've achieved, has the experience that you have, and you're willing to, to give back to the rest of the industry. So I appreciate that. So we're going to talk about a, a few things. I want to squeeze every bit of juice I can out of, out of you. So if you're listening and you're interested, uh, for there's a, f- a couple of you who have contacted me and said, hey, I'm going to graduate college soon with an engineering degree or a construction management degree. What advice can you give me? Well, Brian's going to give you some advice. We're also going to talk about if you are a new, a new business or you are about to start a business, Brian's going to give you some advice there. He's also going to give advice to um, millennials. If you have, Brian's going to give you his what he calls unsolicited career advice, career career advice. So we're going to get into that. So uh, let's just jump in and let's start with um, with this topic. What is something that you believe to be true when it comes to business and leadership that some people, contractors specifically, would not agree with? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a really interesting question. Uh, you know, the, the, the construction industry, the design and construction industry, obviously, is a very technical industry. And whether you're in the field as a, as a designer, as a project manager, a general contractor, whether you own a small business, whether you're working for a company, we tend to think in very technical terms. How do we design a building? How do we build a building? How do we go through all of the processes necessary to make sure the building is constructed well, that the quality is in place, that we're on schedule, that it's profitable. Uh, but one of the things that I think that I find so many folks seem to forget, especially folks that are thinking about owning, starting a firm or owning a firm, and I think there's two aspects of this industry. Number one is sales and how important it is to, to be a salesman in the construction industry. Uh, as I tell people, if, if you own a construction firm and you don't have clients, you don't have anything. 
the clients are everything. All of us need clients because the client is the one that provides the money and the client is the one that needs the building built or modernized or, or renovated or, or whatever. Um, so we have to have clients, and the way we get those clients is we have to be salesmen. And I don't mean the hardcore sales type of individual or the individual that we look at and say, that person is a natural salesman or salesperson. I'm just talking about having a genuine ability to communicate with people, to, to present yourself in an honest and a forthright manner, and to have knowledge of your product knowledge of what you're providing. So if you're a home builder, you have an innate knowledge of what it takes to build that home, what the budget requirements are to build that home. If you're an office builder, same thing. You know that office market up and down in terms of what subcontractors are necessary, what elements are used for an office building. Um, And then just, again, that genuine ability to relate to people and to be able to sell your product. And so many folks in this industry forget about that, or they minimize the need for that. But what I tell everybody, and in fact, all of my managers in my company go through some level of sales training. And I tell them, so whether you're out there trying to develop a new client or a new business line, or you're simply trying to ensure that you do the second, the third, and fourth project for that client you're working for now, you have to have that sales ability. So number one, sales ability. Number two that I find that a lot of people just, again, seem to minimize is the ability to understand the financial side of the business. Construction finances can be very difficult uh, and it can take a lot of dedication and a lot of commitment to understand and to learn how to maintain the financial viability, whether it's a construction project or a construction company. Uh, But you need to understand the finances. And a lot of folks, I've actually had people tell me before, I can turn that over to my CPA or I can turn that over to my controller or my accountant or whoever. And that's simply not an acceptable answer. You have to understand the financial picture of your organization and of your projects. And if you don't, you're going to find that you're, you're really limiting yourself and your ability to grow and develop in this business as a manager. So number one thing, sales. Number two thing, finances. And it's taught a little bit in our universities, and the construction programs are probably not enough. And it's something I think should really have a little bit more focus for these young folks coming out of college. Let's talk. I want to talk about both of those a little bit. I want to talk about sales and the financial side. Um, on sales, when, th- when people think of selling, well, in construction, a lot of people think estimating is selling. We're just kicking out proposals, responding to RFPs. In your opinion, how much, what percentage of a proposal when you respond to a client request is the actual price? Is it, is the price the most important thing? Is price 25% of the proposal in your mind? Is there a lot of other work that needs to be done? on the relationship and other things outside of the price. Talk about your approach to to selling and how much, is there an overemphasis on the price? Um, is there not enough emphasis on other things? Do you understand where I'm, what I'm asking? Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about estimating. <laughs> estimating is exactly what the term says it is. It's estimating. It is determining how much it will cost to build that building before it's been built. And in, in my business, as a design-build business, we're often estimating without even a set of documents because we're giving a client a price for a building and we've yet to produce the documents. So we're giving them a full design-build proposal. Obviously, uh, in the construction industry, a lot of estimating is done on 100% completed documents. But anybody that's been in the construction industry knows there's no such thing as 100% completed documents. It's impossible to have 100% completed documents that detail everything within the building. So estimating is just that. You're estimating the cost of the building. It has nothing to do with sales. So what you're doing is you're developing some level of pricing. And whether you're committing to that pricing and saying, I'm going to sign a contract with you, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Client, 
and, and here the contract amount will be X because that's what I've estimated, or whether you're saying this is a budget amount and we'll go through and we'll build it and we'll you know, firm up prices as we get along, whatever contract delivery that you select is still estimating. It has nothing to do with the sales. And a question about how important is price. So here's the thing with construction that a lot of people tend to forget, um, and, and I'm going to take it down to an analogy of, of, let's say, an automobile. Uh, you can walk into uh, one dealership and you can see, and I'm going to name dealerships, so you walk into one dealership and you can see a, a sedan, and that sedan will be $50,000. Now that sedan will turn on when you, when you turn on the key. Uh, everything will work. It will get you from point A to point B in some level of comfort. It will have air conditioning. It will have heating. Uh, it will be quiet. It will have a radio, all of those things. You can walk to another dealership and see the same size sedan with the same four tires, probably the same engine size. It will seat just as many people, but that sedan may be $50,000. So why would somebody buy a sedan for $50,000 when they can go down the street and get the same or a similar sedan that does all of the same things for $25,000? We all know the answer to that is because the sedan the $50,000 sedan has a lot better quality, uh, or, or we assume it has a lot better quality. The paint's a better quality. It has more features. Uh, the engine may be made with better components. The tires are better. Um, so what you're getting, uh, what, what you're finding is there's a value proposition here. And, and I like to use the term of best value. So if I'm sitting down with a client, and they're looking for the building version of the $25,000 sedan, uh, it certainly helps that I know that. And that when we're planning out their facility, that we can include the components or the quality level that will give them that $25,000 sedan analogy, if you will. By the same token, I'm sitting down with a client, and they want the building version of the $50,000 sedan. I need to know that as well. So, again, all estimating is doing is estimating the cost. The sales piece is being able to determine what your client is looking for, what their expectations are from their building or their facility, and then being able to price that, but also being able to give them, again, the best value. So that when they're paying for those higher price components or that, that more expensive HVAC system or, or the lighting system that does much more than a standard lighting system, whatever it may be, a higher quality roof, I mean, you can go on and on, that we are getting them the best price for that particular component. So if they want a roofing system that provides a much greater warranty and a much longer life than another roofing system, my responsibility as their design builder or their contractor or whatever is making sure they're getting the best value. Uh, so that's where the sales piece comes in, if that, if that makes sense. So not to say that price is irrelevant because it's not. Price is very relevant. But what is really important is to understand the expectation of the client and then getting them the best value for whatever components they want in their building. That's a great explanation. I like the statement that estimating has nothing to do with sales. That's very, very accurate. Um, one more thing on selling. What is, a, what is one mindset issue when it comes to selling that people need to get over in order to be successful? Is there anything that comes to mind? Yeah, there is. And that uh, being the cheapest out there is not what's important. Is it going to be important to be uh, a better cost? Absolutely. Are some clients only going to look at cost? Absolutely. But that is not what every client is looking for. What most clients are looking for, in my experience, of 30 years and putting in place well over $2 billion worth of work is that clients are looking for best value. They're willing to pay. If, if you can understand what their true expectations are, what their needs are, and you can provide them the best quality that fits into their price category, they will typically pay for that. So don't get caught up with, I've got to be the cheapest out there in order to sell this project. That never works. I've never seen that work in the construction industry. Uh, and, and anybody that would want to argue that point with me, I'd be willing to, 
to have a debate however they want to go, how long they want to go, but, but it's not all about the price. Good advice. Back to the importance of understanding the financial side. If, if somebody has very little visibility into their construction business right now, what are, if you did an 80-20 analysis on their finances, what are the critical few things that they should really be focused on if they, if they just don't know where to start? Well, in the construction industry, there's two things I think you have to start with. Number one is at the overhead level. Understand what your fixed overhead is. So whether that's your rent on your building, if you're, uh, you know, your, your folks that aren't don't get charged to a project, so maybe that is your accountant, maybe it's some uh, administrative help, maybe it's uh, maybe it's your sales uh, person. Uh, understand what your fixed overhead is. You need to know uh, what your commitments are from a fixed uh, a monthly cost. Um, also understand what your payroll is. <laughs> know how much you're paying out every month for the folks that are on your payroll, including the project-based folks. Uh, so understand what your payroll is. And then the, the next thing that's just as important is have a clear financial picture of, of your projects. Uh, understand if your projects are actually profitable or if they're breaking even or if they're not profitable. And to do that, you need to be able to forecast. Uh, our project managers at my company can tell you on day one if what their percentage, what what their potential is to have a profitable project, and they can probably tell you pretty closely what that profit level will be on a project. Uh, so understand what your projects are doing, understand what their profit probability is, and understand what that profit looks like, so that you can be able to forecast in the, into the future. You know, construction, whether it's on the project level or it's all in the, on the company level, is all about forecasting because we're committing to these projects. You're committing to this $10 million, $20 million project that's going to take, let's say, 12 months to construct. So you're forecasting out for the next 12 months what your profitability is going to be on that project. Um, you need to understand that. You need to know how to do that. You need to have a system in place that allows you to, to do that. Good advice, good advice. So speaking of advice for business owners, there are a lot of folks that listen to this podcast who are business owners or they are entrepreneurs. They they are planning on starting a business. So I'd like to ask your advice for three groups of people. Let's start with the people who are planning to start a construction business in the next year or two. What What are a couple of pieces of advice Maybe some uh, some punches to the face that are coming their way that they need to be aware of, or any other advice you would give to somebody in that situation. Yeah, you know, um, the construction industry is a huge industry, and it involves everything from you know building decks on the back of houses to building multi-billion-dollar facilities for you know Fortune 500 companies all over the world, and everything in between. So if an individual is thinking about opening a construction firm, the first thing I would say to them is understand what they plan to do. Have a plan. Um, don't say, well, I'm going to go build buildings. What type of buildings? You know, what, what are you going to offer? What service are you going to offer? Are you going to self-perform? Are you going to use subcontractors? Are you going to focus on a specific geographic market? Are you going to focus on a specific client type? Are you going to focus on a specific building type? So have a pretty clear plan of what you want to do. Don't just plan on putting a shingle out there and and saying, you know, I'm a construction company and, and we can build stuff. Now, you know, with that said, all of us, myself included, after a number of years doing this, you find that you might be building something that you never thought you would be building in the first place. So that's the evolution of owning a construction company. But you should start out with a clear idea of what you're going to do, what your focus is going to be, who you're going to work for. Um, I think that's the most important thing. I mean, people talk a lot about capital. Um, certainly capital is important. Um, but, you know, you can have all the capital in the world, and if you don't know what you're doing with it, it'll be gone very quickly. Um, so have a clear plan on what you're going to do and who you're going to work for. 
and, and what your business is, is going to provide in the marketplace. If somebody doesn't really know what they want to do, but they know they want to be in the construction industry and they want to own their own business, in your in your experience and where the world is right now, what are some are, are there any opportunities that you would direct them toward that maybe not so apparent? Maybe there are gaps that need to be filled, pains that need to be solved, little seams that little pockets of opportunity that that people are not serving. Is there anything that that you could point people in that direction of? So, you know, one of the biggest issues the construction industry is facing today is a labor shortage. We simply do not have enough qualified labor uh, in, in the construction trades, and I'm talking about skilled labor. Um, and what that means is that when a firm such as myself can identify a quality subcontractor, a, a, a subcontracting firm that is very good at what they do, and let's just let's take an example, let's say a, a millwork subcontractor. Um, if you can find that quality millwork subcontractor that provides quality work at a fair price, they're responsive, they meet their schedules, they meet their deadlines, they don't take on more work than they can handle, uh, that type of firm can become like golden to the general contracting trades. Um, and it's, you know, we, I, my company works in cities all across the United States. Uh, and, and we worked in just about every major city, certainly east of the east of the Mississippi. And I can tell you, every time we go into one of these cities, we tend to find about three or four quality subcontractors in each trade. It, it's that limited. Obviously, when you get into some of the larger cities like a Chicago area, and, and you know, there's a lot of suburbs, and there's more than that. But it, the subcontractor industry right now, I think, is ripe for opportunities for an individual that wants to go out there and develop an expertise in one specific area of construction and, and bring on a quality workforce, treat that workforce correctly, um, and then develop a good stable of general contractor clients that, that they can work for and continue to do their work over and over. Um, now, again, they have to have the sales ability, they've got to have the financial ability, and they've got to be committed to excellence in their, in their trade and in their craft. Um, but I think that's a fantastic opportunity right now. Good advice. I appreciate that. The next category of business owner would be the individual who is, is at a place where they've been in business for, let's say, two years less than two years. They've been in business, they started their business, they're, they're operating zero to two years. What's, what, what advice would you give them? What should they be focused on? I'm going to say two things here. Uh, the first thing is don't give up. <laughs> because I think every one of us that have started a company, and sometime in that first five years, something's going to happen that's either going to frighten you or going to make you think, what am I doing? Why did I do this? Uh, I'm not comfortable. This isn't working. Uh, you know, something's not right. Um, so I would say, you know, don't give up. Stick it out. Um, there's, there's a lot to be said for persistence and dedication in this industry. So it's, it's making that commitment to, to stay with it uh, and to stay involved in the business. Um, so I, I think that would be my first piece of advice to that in, in answer to that question. The second piece of advice I would give folks, uh, every year at my company, we spend a lot of time doing what we call strategic planning. And we get together the top managers in my organization, and we go away. Uh, we do it for two days at the end of the year, and then we sort of do a regroup sometime around the middle of the year. And all we do is talk about the business. We talk about the challenges within the business. We talk about the issues within the business. We're very open and honest with ourselves. What's not going right? Uh, what's going well? What do we need to improve on? Uh, and we sit down and we do a thorough and in-depth analysis of the business. And we come away with that with some action items, some goals, some initiatives, whatever you want to call it. But things that we need to do to make the business better. Uh, I would advise any business owner, 
to, to take on some level of detailed planning of their business. I, you know, you asked me what should the, the new the person wanting to get into business, what should they do? They should, I said they should have a plan. Basically, it's a continuation of that. It's continue the planning, uh, take an honest analysis of your business, and continue to let the business evolve and grow, but direct that, uh, direct that growth, direct that uh, uh, development of the business, um, and, and continue to do that. And it's, you know, some people say, well, maybe I only have three employees or four employees, or, and I'm not big enough, and that's absolutely not true. Uh, if you've got, you know, two or three employees, you've got enough people to sit down and, and do some strategic planning for, you know, whether it's a couple of hours or a couple of days, and to figure out what you need to do to continue to, to grow and develop the business. Absolutely. Figure out what you want to do, be proactive, take action. Yep. Don't just let circumstances happen to you, but be in the driver's seat of your business. Couldn't agree more. Well put. La last bucket or last category of people would be the people who've survived the first two years of business, and now they're a, they're a, a growing entity. They've put some systems in place. What should they be looking at from years two to five? I think that's when you start looking at, at the, the folks that you're going to be adding to the business and how can they help the business. So, for example, when my company started out, uh, and let's say our first year we were a $10 million a year company, uh, there was a lot of things that I could do. I could be the guy that's out there doing a lot of the sales. I could be working on the estimates. I could be visiting the job sites once a week or three times a month or, or whatever. I could sit in on a lot of those client meetings. Today at $120, $130 million dollar company, I can't do all of that. Uh, like I said, we've got projects all over the country. Um, I, I can't be involved at that level anymore. My time is is really spent on, on different things now than it was spent on 10, 15 years ago. Um, so what that means is I've got to depend on a really great group of folks that I've got at my company who are uh, reliable, who are knowledgeable. They know more than, than I know, quite frankly, about the uh, project management and, and, and building types, uh, who uh, are great with clients, who have sales ability, who have financial acumen, all of these uh, necessary elements to a construction company, I I've got to now depend on others to do that. So when you're growing the company and you're in your fourth, fifth, sixth year and, and, and things are looking good and revenues are going up and your client base is developing, you're going to need to bring on help and you're going to need to start delegating. And, and that becomes a very, very important part of the business is identifying the right folks and then training those folks. Um, so we, we have a pretty aggressive uh, college recruitment program at AM King. We, we like to hire young people right out of college. And one of the reasons we like to do that is because we like to train and develop those young individuals uh, in, in the way that we do things and how we run projects and in our culture and in the way we treat others, whether it be our client, our subcontractors, or, or fellow employees. So um, I think that's the big thing is, is learning to, and, and accepting the fact that you have to delegate. Uh, you have to delegate and you have to entrust other people with a big part of your organization. Great advice. Definitely. I've seen it plenty of times where the, the leader becomes the lid of the organization, as John Maxwell would put it, and um, they can't understand why the company's not growing and, and they're, the, right. they're the ceiling. So let's talk about some you said that you have some unsolicited career advice that you you tend to offer to folks in college. Let's drop that on on some of these folks who are maybe about to they're maybe in their last semester or last quarter of school. What what's what's the advice that maybe they don't want to hear but they need to hear? Yeah, uh, I I have the opportunity to speak probably four or five times a year at uh, some of the. Uh, more major uh, construction degree programs at some, some great universities uh, around the country. And uh, they asked me to speak on different topics. And, but I always like to throw in there what I call unsolicited career advice. Um, 
that I like to offer these students. And it's just things that I've that I've thought about or uh, have have seen in my career that uh, I found to be pretty important. And uh, so I, I can share some of those with you. And and the first one's really kind of maybe sort of silly, but it's it's write things down. And what I what I tell these folks is that you know the greatest cause of litigation. Uh, arbitration or just disputes in the construction industry is lack of documentation. And, you know, it's just as simple as writing stuff down. And look, I'm 55 years old. Uh, I still keep a calendar that's a paper and a pencil. Um, so, you know, I write things down on a notepad and uh, then I'll document it somewhere else. But uh, especially on the project level, write things down. Have you know have things documented, and it's not in a way of you know trying to catch somebody later on. It's just in a way of this is what was said, this is what was agreed upon. So write things down. And the other thing is, um, like I said, I have a lot of young people work in my company. They know if they come into my office to meet with me, they need to bring a, a pen and a notepad because we're going to talk about things, and I'm probably going to give them some things that. I need them to do or some assignments or something of that nature. Uh, and I expect them to know that. So if I say, you know, please get me this report by next Tuesday, I'll write down that I'm looking for that report from next Tuesday. And uh, hopefully they will, they will too. So write things down. Um, the second one is what I call treat others the same way you want to be treated. Uh, so, you know, this industry is all about working with people. Um, and I've mentioned it three or four times, whether it's a client, Contractor, a vendor, other contractors, your your coworkers, uh, you know, inspectors. Um, it's just it's a people business, and people respond to being treated well, um, and they respond to being treated fairly, and they respond to being treated respectfully, um, and that, quite frankly, is how we all want to be treated. So. Um, you know, treat others the way that you want to be treated, and you'll get a lot more um, out of these folks than than doing otherwise. The next thing is uh, is be humble. So I, I look, I usually look out at these students in the classroom, and I'll say, you know what? Twenty years from now, many of you will have built some of the the, the best structures in the world. You have worked all over the world. You have, you know, been involved in multi-million dollar projects. You will be running companies. You'll be running projects. Uh, and that's all great. And you should be very proud of that. But at the end of the day, be humble. Uh, understand that there really is no such thing as a self-made person that we all have gotten here because of the, uh, uh, the way that others have guided us and mentored us. Um, uh, so be humble and be and be respectful. And then the next piece of advice to follow up that is to listen to, learn from, and rely upon others. Uh, again, what I tell these young people is when they come to our company, what we're really looking for them to do is to learn in the first two or three years. We need them to learn, to learn everything they can. Uh, and we're going to surround you with a lot of very intelligent, very seasoned construction professionals and uh, listen to them. Learn from them, and uh, and and rely upon them. The uh, the next one I, I I say is to be flexible and open, yet be strategic. So again, the construction industry, uh, you you don't know what projects you're going to be working on tomorrow. You don't know where you're going to be working. You don't know what your role is going to be. Uh, be open to that. Uh, don't don't uh, pigeonhole yourself into this is what I want to do, and this is the type of building I want to work on, and this is the type of uh, geographic area I want to work in. Be flexible, be open, but yet be strategic. Think about your next move. Think about uh, where you want to, to be in three, four, or five years and what you want to be doing, but be flexible and open as you, as you move forward with that. And then, and then two more that I really think uh, would apply to any business other than construction. Um, and, but the, the first one I think really does have a significant um, application to construction, and that is that success really requires a high energy level and a strong work ethic. Uh, construction is a tough business, and it's a demanding business, and it requires people to work very, very hard 
oftentimes with very long hours, uh, and oftentimes with a lot of sacrifice. Uh, but unfortunately, that's still the nature of our business, and to be successful means you're probably going to have to work very hard, and you're going to have to have a high energy level as you, uh, as you move through your career. And then finally, the last thing I tell folks uh, is always do the right thing. Uh, you know, and, and every now and then one young man or one woman will raise their hand and they'll say, you know, Brian, how do I know if something's the right thing or not? And my response is, you know. You always know if you're doing the right thing. So always do the right thing, uh, and you will, you will be fine in this industry. So that's my unsolicited career advice. Uh, uh, that I give to uh, college students. So uh, um, hopefully it, it has some meaning as well for, for some of your listeners. Well, I, I think it, uh, I, I'm confident that it applies to upcoming college grads, but uh, I would say it applies to everybody else too. Anybody with less than 80 years of work experience can probably <laughs> apply that. So listen, I know we're, we're running out of time. Um, I really appreciate you being on the the podcast, Brian. If people want to connect with you, want to follow your stuff, find out more about your company, where can they go to do that? Sure. Uh, Well, my company website is uh, www.amkinggroup.com. So that's all about the company and and what we do. Um, For me, myself, I also have a, uh, a blog that I write. Uh, it's not necessarily construction related. It's really more career advice, primarily focused on the young professional. And that can be found at my website, which is bryantking.com. So www.briantking.com. Um, and from there, you can see how to follow me on Twitter, or Facebook, or LinkedIn. I have all of those links posted on that website. And you can also follow us on the other social media at AM King. And if you go to amkinggroup.com, uh, you can find out how to follow us there on different social media platforms. So uh, well, I'd encourage anybody that is interested to go out there and look at that stuff. And we're, we're pretty active on social media, so uh, certainly follow us and, and take some interest in what we're doing. And, and uh, I would invite anybody else also to, to visit the blog. We, we, uh, I post once a week, uh, usually a, a weekly topic. Um, so... Uh, and you can also subscribe to the blog, and you can do that on the website as well. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, Brian. This has been been great advice for everybody from college up, or upcoming or recent college grads all the way through business owners. It's always it's always great to hear from somebody with the uh, the depth of experience that you have. So I really appreciate your willingness to give back and sharing everything that you've got. So thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Todd. I appreciate it. Enjoyed it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that interview. hope you got some good stuff out of that. If you want the notes to some of the things we talked about, the resources that were mentioned in this podcast, all you have to do is go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash 072, and you'll be able to get your hands on that. Also, construction business owners, two things for you if you want to get your hands on a free video series that will help you improve your cash flow delegate better, get more done, and find out some of the secrets of successful construction business owners, go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash owner. And if you're a construction business owner and you want to eliminate some chaos, turn your business into a well-oiled machine, I want to get on the phone with you for a free coaching session. And you can book your free coaching session at constructionleadingedge.com forward slash call. Lastly, if you are a podcast listener and you want to get more information, if you like the podcast and you want to go deeper and get some more of the free resources, then you need to get on my email list. And if you're not on the email list, you can go join the Construction Leading Edge Nation by simply going to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash nation, N-A-T-I-O-N. Enter your email address there, and I will send you some stuff. You'll get insider stuff. You'll find out what's going on behind the scenes, and I'll get some more free resources in your hands. Don't forget, I appreciate reviews. If you like the podcast, go leave a review on the podcast player of your choice. I've got a couple here that I'll read. One is from Redwood Builders. 
And Redwood Builder says, Construction Leading Edge is the go-to podcast for, for small construction business owners or those who are looking to take the leap to start their own business. Todd provides excellent information and has a variety of guests on the podcast that cover a wide range of topics in and about the construction industry. Another one that came in recently is from 21P, referring to the Right to Left Thinking podcast, which I think is episode 65. It says He says this, this podcast was so simple, but so many contractors work the hard way and still come up short. Love it. Right to left thinking. That's a drum that I've been beating now for a few months. If you haven't listened to that podcast, go check it out, episode 65. Well, that is it. Go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash 072. If you can't remember any of those other links, go to constructionleadingedge.com forward slash 072. Everything will be there, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>